the challenge of the Yukon. It's King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the North Country, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On, you huskies! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the greedy race for riches. Now back to the days of the gold rush, when Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, King, battled through storm and snow to preserve law and order as they met the challenge of the Yukon. Tim O'Hara lived alone with his sister Mary in the town of Galway, Ireland. As he waited for the postman at the gate that led to the winding path toward the house, a shaggy gray dog almost as large as a Shetland pony ambled up to his side. The dog, a full-grown Irish wolfhound, looked solemnly over the gate which reached only to a point well under his big muzzle. Tim laughed as he patted the huge head. <laughs> sure, Taylor. And you look as if you're expecting a letter yourself this morning. <laughs> well, I doubt that either of us will get one, but we, we can at least say good morning to Paddy the postman. There he is now. The top of the morning to you, Paddy. Ah, tell me, me boy, I got something for you today. A letter with a foreign stamp on it. A foreign stamp, you say? Sure, and what could it be? Give it to me. Sure, it's a good thing I know this doggy or since he was a pup. Or I'd be delivering your mail from the end of a fishing pole. <laughs> Glory be to heavens, he gets bigger every day. Oh, well, here you are. But this letter, Paddy, it's addressed to my father. To your father? Yes, it's Timothy Thomas O'Hara. And I'm Timothy Patrick O'Hara. Sure, and I never noticed that. But then your father being dead these two years, it never entered me mind. Well, you better open it, Tim. It might be from someone who ain't heard yet about your father. Well, good day to you now, and I hope it ain't bad news. I wonder who could be writing. Yeah. Wait till I uh, find the signature. Your brother, Michael. It's from Uncle Michael. Mary! Mary! Mary, where are you? Oh, here's your tea. Yell in the bit your coat tails were a fire. It's a letter, Mary. A letter from Uncle Michael. Uncle Michael? You mean he's still alive? Well, it isn't written on asbestos. And if I remember Uncle Michael, that's the only way he could write a letter if he'd, if he'd passed on. Oh, stop your nonsense, Tim, and read it. Is it from America? No, it's from someplace in Canada, I think. Wait, wait, I'll read it to you. Dear Tim, I know you must be thinking that by now I'm playing a harp with the angels after slipping by St. Peter when he was looking the other way. <laughs> <laughs> but it's far from the truth. I left Ireland to seek my fortune, and glory be, I found it. Tim, I'm going to be a rich man. I've struck gold in the Yukon Territory. Struck gold, he says. And he was the uncle that was always the black sheep of my grandfather's flock. Oh, go in, Tim, read it. I've been wondering... If by now that young son of yours isn't old enough to feel the urge for adventure. He had a look in his eye, even when he was ten, that told me he wouldn't be content to settle down. Uh, father always feared you'd be like Uncle Michael. And I always wanted to be. Oh, hurry, Tim, read it. It's lonesome up here, and it's cold. But I'm wondering if you'd let him come to me for a year. Mining is hard work. But it would be well worth his while is I'd see to it that he had money enough to live in a castle the rest of his life and support every O'Hara in the county if necessary. Oh, he wants you to come there and help him with his gold mine? Mary, we'll be rich. Oh, you, you mean you'll go? Sure, and you don't think I'll stay here in Ireland with a gold mine waiting for me? But, but Tim... Oh, well, something dropped from between the pages. There, there on the floor. Yeah. Boy, it's a draft for money. He sent me the fare. About twice as much as I need. Oh, then I can go too. And we'll take terror. Mary, have you taken leave of your senses? I can't be bothered with a woman and it's for terror. Oh, look at him, Tim. He loves you more than his soul. And if he was parted from us, he'd die of a broken heart. That he would. Ah, uh, we're going, I say. You're not getting around me anyway at all. You'll stay in here, I said. I'm going to write to Uncle Michael right away. I'll get you a pen. But be sure you don't mention me. That I won't. <laughs> You know, I think maybe we'd better sell the house. The Bonanza Bell steamed slowly up the Yukon River. Tim and Mary stood on the deck with a big dog, Tara, between them. 
Mary was breathless with the beauty of the landscape before her. Oh, I'm to think, Tim O'Hara, that you tried to make me stay in Ireland and miss all of this. I guess I should have known that I couldn't talk you out of it. But Uncle Michael is going to be surprised. Ah, but he'll be pleased. <laughs> I'm getting chilly. I, I think I'll go down and put another sweater on. Oh, here comes the two men we met last night, Mary. Talk to them, will you, until I come back. Uh, you might bring me another wrap, Tim. I'm getting cold, too. All right, Mary. Good morning, Mr. Harris. Oh, good morning, Mr. Davis. How are you this morning? Oh, just fine, thank you, Mr. Danvers. I'm glad that big dog of yours is good-natured. We were almost afraid to come oh. near you. Sarah is a pet. He's very gentle. Bob and I were talking to your brother last night, and he showed us the map that marked where your uncle lives. That's not going to be an easy trip, Miss O'Hara. You'll need lots of equipment. Well, my uncle sent us plenty of money. We can buy our supplies in Dawson, can't we? Uh, it might take you quite a while to get him. Uh, you know where you're going to stay in, Dawson? Well, hotel, I suppose. <laughs> oh, that's easier said than done. Since the last gold strike on the Klondike, people have been flocking to Dawson City in groves. You can't get a room for any kind of money. My men are sleeping 20 in a room, sleeping right on oh, the floor. Oh, glory be... We had no idea it was that bad. Well, Joe and I were thinking, ma'am, uh, maybe you'd better plan on our cabin. We've got one in Dawson. Oh, well, <laughs> no. Oh, that's fine and generous of you. But uh, is it big enough for all of us? Bob and me can bunk with some friends of ours. Anyway, we're taking a trip north, too, and we might be able to leave a day or so after getting to Dawson. Oh, would you be going anywhere near the place my Uncle Michael lives? Say, come to think of it, we will. Or maybe we could wait over for a week or so and go together. Does your brother know anything about driving a dog team? No, he doesn't. But we thought it would be easy to do. No, it's not so easy, ma'am. These dogs up here are savage. you got to know how to handle them. And anyway, you and your brother couldn't just take off alone on a trip like that. First time there was a blizzard, you'd get lost. We, we thought we'd hire a guy. Well, you can't trust him, Miss O'Hara. This is rough country. Might get robbed or murdered. It isn't civilized like most oh, places. It would be fine if we could all go together. Oh, here's Tim now. Let's tell him about it. Here's your rap, Mary. Uh, Good morning, boys. How oh, there. <laughs> that was quite a card game we had last night. I'll give you a chance to win some of your money back tonight. Oh, Tim, will you gambling? Uh, uh, just enough to make the game interesting. Your sister can tell you what we've been talking about. I guess we better go down and get some breakfast. We're starved. Uh, come on, Bob. We'll see you in about half an hour. You'll find us right here on the deck. Oh, these men have been very nice. <laughs> oh, it worked like a charm, Bob. She was the one who asked if they could go north with us. That's what I hoped she'd do. It's a crazy idea. It's a chance to make a fortune. You're the same age he is, and his uncle hasn't seen him since he was ten. Girl's awful pretty. I hate to think of harming her. Now, don't you go soft. Here's our chance to make a fortune. We'll get rid of him some way on the trail north. You can pass yourself off as the nephew. The old man lives alone, way off in the wilderness. He's got a rich mine. We can take plenty of gold out of it. And if he gets suspicious, maybe he can have an accident. I don't want any part of it if it's going to mean murder. Monty's up here too smart. You leave that part of it to me. All you got to do is learn all about Tim O'Hara. We'll let him win more money from us so he'll think we're honest. And all the time you keep him talking about himself. And talk as much like him as you can. You can leave the rest of the plan to me. Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police with his big lead dog, King, beside him stood with Jim Peters, watching the crowd disembark from the riverboat at Dawson. Suddenly, the hair on King's back rose and a growl rumbled in his throat as Tim and Mary O'Hara came down the gangplank, leading Tara. The huge Irish wolfhound was the biggest dog anyone on the dock had ever seen, and Jim Peters gasped it with amazement. Holy jumping Jehoshaphat! Will you look at that animal? What is it? That's the biggest dog I've ever seen, Jim. Quiet, King. I guess even you can't believe it, fella. But if you're as smart as I think you are, you'll make friends with that dog. Look at the jaw on him. <laughs> what is he, an Airedale cross with an elephant? <laughs> well, Jim, I think he's an Irish wolfhound. I've heard about them, but I've never seen one. But look at the jaw on him. One bite and you could take a man's head off. Come on, let's get a closer look at him. All right. Hold tight to the leash, Mary. That Mountie has a big dog, too. Tara won't make trouble. Welcome to Dawson. I'm Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police, and this is Jim Peters. Howdy. How do you do? I'm Tim O'Hara, and this is Mary, my sister. How do you do? Howdy. We're from Galway, Ireland. You're a long way from home. 
a fine dog you have there. Purple King. Bad oh, boy. let him make friends if he will. You have a brave dog there, Sergeant. Poor Terra can seldom make friends with any. Most of them take one look at him and run with their tails to them. <laughs> and Terra's as gentle as a summer breeze and wouldn't hurt more than a flea. <laughs> <laughs> look at them, walking around stiff-legged. Uh-huh. They're not going to fight. Hey, they are now. You see, their tails are beginning to wag. I knew King had good sense. Uh, two grand animals they are. Each appreciating how fine the other is. Your dog's an Irish wolfhound, isn't he? That he is, Sergeant. And one of the few purebred ones left. They're rare now, even in Ireland. Terry's ancestors killed most of the wolves in the land. Yeah, we've got some big wolves up here in the north country. Most dogs wouldn't stand a chance with them. I think this dog would, Jim. He could snap their backbone with that jaw of his. And that's what they're bred for. You planning to stay in Dawson? For about a week or two. Well, the town is packed jammed. There ain't an inch of room at the hotel. Wait, we're staying with some friends of ours here. They came up on the boat with us. They went ahead to get their dog team so we could get all of our baggage up to their cabin. Do they live in Dawson? Just outside of it. You probably know them. Joe Davis and Bob Danvers? Why, uh, no, I don't know them. Yeah, I've met them, I think. They live out next to Ned Ames, Sergeant. Oh, yes, I know where that is. Well, if you know where we'll be, I hope you'll come out to see us soon. Why, I'd like to very much. I'd like to find out more about that dog of yours. It was evening a few days later. Joe Davis and Bob Danvers had finished the supper that Mary had cooked in the small cabin near the edge of town. We'll be ready to start north in a few days, I think. I'm trying to buy a couple more dogs for the team. We'll have quite a load. If you need more money, I'll I'll be glad to give it to you. Ah, I don't think so. But uh, did you copy the map that shows where your uncle's place is? I thought some of the boys might be able to tell us a shortcut if I showed it to them. Yes, yes. There's a copy here. You'd better keep it in case I lose mine. And sure, uh, don't you think we'd better be going, Joe? The time's getting late. Oh, Paul. (laughs) Why, you're talking exactly like Tim. Well, you sound as if you'd just come from the old country. (laughs) Did I? I didn't notice it. (laughs) An Irish accent can be catching. I've been talking to him so much about Ireland that he's beginning to turn into an Irishman himself. (laughs) Well, uh, Bob's right. We gotta get going. I promised to meet some of the boys tonight. We'll see you tomorrow. All right, Joe. Uh, uh, you can you can let Terry in. Now that you're leaving, there'll, there'll be room for him in here. Uh, he's waiting here at the door. Uh, go on in, Terry. Good night. Good night. Good night. Oh, well, Terry, old fella. Are you cold? <laughs> he loves this country. It's wild and rugged like him. Oh, he's not wild, are you, boy? <laughs> oh, someone at the door. Hello, Tim. Hello, Sergeant. Come in. Did you bring King with you? Why, yes, but I think we'd better put the dogs outside. They're a bit large for this place. (laughs) Good idea. They take up all the room. Come, Terry. You and King, outside for a while. I see you've a lot of supplies ready. You'll soon be starting north, I suppose. In about a week, I think. I almost hate to leave. I'm beginning to like it here. I I hope it won't mean that we've seen the last of you, Sergeant. Well, one reason I dropped in tonight, Tim, was to tell you that I have to make a northern patrol. I thought if you could tell me where your uncle lives, I might see you on the way back. Oh, Sergeant, please do. Tim has a map, and he could show you exactly where Uncle Michael lives. Sure, and I can do better than that. I made some copies of the map for Joe and Bob, and thought I'd better make one for Mary, too. You can have hers, Sergeant. Oh, that he can, if he promises to visit us. <laughs> Here's the map, Sergeant. Thanks. Oh, it's a long trip we'll be making. Joe says it's over a hundred miles. He's right. Your uncle's in a very isolated section. You know, uh, I'm glad you're going with friends who are used to the North Country. It'll be very easy to get lost. We're lucky to have Joe and Bob. They've got a good dog team and we'll be safe with them. I have to visit quite a few places on this patrol north. I'm sure you'll get to your uncle's long before I do. Won't be very far out of the way, though, so I'll try and make it. Oh, be sure you do, Sergeant. Tim and I will be looking forward to it. Days of steady traveling carried Tim and Mary far north with Joe and Bob. Tara, the big wolfhound, ran free after proving too big and too fast for the rest of the dog team. Then suddenly, the terrible winter of the Yukon struck. As the wind rose and drove the snow into their faces, Joe halted the team at the edge of a spruce forest. Oh, oh there! Oh! We'd better stop here and make shelters while we can. I think a blizzard's blowing up. Isn't it sleep in the open? 
Can't we go a bit farther and perhaps find the trapper's cabin as we've done before? We'd be taking too much of a chance. You don't know what these blizzards are like. But we can't let Mary stay out in the open. Oh, now don't worry about me, Tim. I have plenty of fur robes. We must do as they say. You and Mary make camp while Bob and I cut some branches for the shelters and the beds. I'll take this axe. You bring the other one, Bob. Come on. Coming. Mary and I will feed the dogs and get the supplies ready. We'll be right back. Well, Bob, tonight's the night we skip. I noticed we left the trail about an hour ago. <laughs> they didn't notice it, though. <laughs> I, I thought it was never going to get started snowing. We're just about a day away from their uncle's place. Think there's any chance of them finding it? No. They wouldn't even know how to find the trail. Now, tonight, when that blizzard is going full blast, we'll sneak away with the dog team and supplies. We'll fix our shelters far away from there so they won't hear nothing. If this wind and snow keeps up, there won't be a sign of our trail by morning. And they won't know one direction from another. Him has a gun, hasn't he? Yeah. But I've got the cartridges. <laughs> Come on. Let's cut these branches. Mary stirred in her fur robes as the pale morning light filtered through the trees. Then she awoke with a start as she heard Tim calling. What is it, Tim? What's wrong? There's no sign of them. Maybe they went out to hunt. Uh, they wouldn't have taken the dog team and all the supplies. They must have left right after we went to sleep. The snow and the wind has covered their trails. There's no way of following them. Oh, Tim. You mean we're here alone? Here in the wilderness with no food yes, or shelter? Mary. I, I have a gun, but only a few bullets have been loose in my pocket. Oh. And until the snow stops and we can see the sun, I, I can't tell the north from the south. There's no food? No food at all? No. There's a little left from last night's supper. We must use it sparingly. Oh, Terror's still here. What about food for him? Uh, Terror will have to hunt for his. Maybe he's luckier than we are. Oh, poor fella. He's hungry now. He thinks since we're awake, we should feed him. He'll stay with us until his hunger drives him away. But he'll always come back to us, Tim. That he will. I'll build up the fire, Mary. When the snow stops, I'll take the gun and try to find some game. That night, Terror the Wolfhound roamed the wilderness alone. A feeling of wild exultation burned in his breast as he covered the miles of wilderness in search of food. Through all the years of gentle living, there had been a feeling deep inside him that cried for expression. Now he knew what it was. The chase and the kill. Like a huge gray shadow, he covered mile after mile in a wide circle... And the sun was high when he returned to camp, his sides bulging with the fruit of his chase. Mary was sitting alone, her goggles shielding her eyes from the cruel glare of the sun on the snow. Terror! Terror, darling, it's you! Oh, oh you've eaten my hope, and I guess you're tired. But, Terror, you must find Tim. He's been gone so long. Can you find him, boy? Terror, go find Tim! <laughs> I hope nothing has happened to Tim. Bring him back, Sheriff. Bring him back. The minutes dragged into hours as Mary sat by the fire waiting. Then suddenly a cry cut through the still air from a distance. <coughs> a quick pang of fear shot through her. <gasps> a wolf! That was a cry of a wolf! blinded me. Oh. Terror found me and brought me back here. I, I can't see and I, I've oh. lost the gun. It's no blind you are. Oh, thanks be to heaven the terror brought you back. Here, here's the fire. Sit down. And let me bind your eyes. Mary, what are we to do? I, I heard a wolf call a short while back. Mary, if the wolves well, gather... we have the fire and we have terror. Uh, terror could fight one or two, but he'd be no match for more than that. Darkness was falling, and Sergeant Preston had stopped on the trail to study the map that Tim had given him. 
Suddenly, he heard King bark up ahead of the team. What's wrong, King? What's bothering you, fella? Oh, those tracks crossing the trail. What? What kind of a... They're so big. You seem to know... Hera, those must be his tracks. No wolf's as big as this. Are those terrorist tracks, King? He's all alone, and those tracks were made today. Wonder where Mary is. Yes, King, I think we'd better follow them. Tara wouldn't leave Mary and Tim. All right, King. After him, boy. Find Tara. On King! On A full moon shone brightly on the two figures huddled before a small fire with the big gray shape of the wolfhound between them. Tim held tightly to the collar of the huge dog as a weird cry broke through the stillness and was answered by another. Down, Hera. Be still, boy. You stay here. Mary, pile more wood on the fire. Oh, if I could only see... Tim. Yes? There, there's no more wood. I used the last of it. And we have no axe. <gasps> what is it, Mary? What's wrong? Oh, Down, Hera. Tim, Tim. Two of them. Blood and cord is over the snow. Oh, there are wolves, Tim. Now they're stopping. And they're circling. Tara, Tara, come back. He's got away from me. Tara, where, where's he gone, Mary? He's waiting them, Tim. Two of them. Oh, oh Mother of Heaven, they'll tear him to pieces. Oh, Tim. If I could see, if I could help him. Tell me, Mary. He, he's killed one, but the other... Oh, oh Tim. More are coming. Oh, there's one coming at him from the side. Give me a brand from the fire. I'll run no, for them. No, 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 Tim. There's another one striking across the clearing. Oh, heaven, help him. Damn it. I must help him. Tim, Tim, that last one. He, he's fighting the other, other wolf. Not terror, but they're rolling in the snow. Mary, there was a gun. A gun? Hello? Help! Help! Mary, what you thought was a wolf. It must be a dog. Are you all right? Oh, Tim, it's Sergeant <laughs> Preston. That dog must be king. Oh, God be praised. The bright light of the fire played over the group around it as Sergeant Preston bent over Tara. The huge wolfhound lay with his head on Mary's lap, his heaving sides covered with blood, his own and his enemies. Three wolf carcasses made dark splotches in the moonlight in the clearing before the fire. Mary wept as she caressed the great dog. Oh, Hera, my darling, what a brave stand you made. How bad is he hurt? Oh, his poor flanks are torn and, and he's weary unto death. Let's see, old fellow. Easy, Tara. That's it, boy. Now he didn't get his throat. All right, Tara. He's lost a lot of blood, but these wounds aren't fatal. Then you live, you think, Sergeant? I think so, Mary. Oh, thank heaven. Thank heaven. You said King is all right? King's very much alive, aren't you, boy? King came in from the side, I guess, and took them by surprise. We owe our lives to these dogs and you, Sergeant. Hold this bandage, will you please, Mary? Oh, surely. All right, Tara, old boy. I'll fix this cut of yours. How did you find us, Sergeant? We found Tara's tracks crossing the trail alone. It took us a long time to find you. He must have been hunting by himself. Where are Joe and Bob? They went off in the night and left us. Went off? And why? I don't know, Sergeant. I thought they were such good friends of yours. We met them on the boat, coming to Dawson. Oh. Joe asked for a copy of the map showing where Uncle Michael was. That's funny. Well, maybe we'll find out. Tomorrow, we'll go to your uncle's. Tim's eyes should be better by morning. But will Tara be able to travel? You and Tara can ride on my sled. All right, Tara. Now, let's fix this other one. Darkness had fallen the following evening when Sergeant Preston's dog sled topped a small hill that overlooked Michael O'Hara's cabin. The Mountie stopped the team. Working! Hey, I think that's your uncle's cabin, Tim. Yeah, I'll be mighty happy to get there. Oh, and so shall I. Terry is tired of being a passenger. I think I'll have to ask you to wait here for a while. Might be dangerous for Mary down there. You think Joe and Bob may have hurt my uncle? I'm going to take King and go down first and investigate. Give me about 15 minutes, and you can drive the dog team down. Come on, King. Come on, boy. Oh, be careful, Sergeant. Sergeant Preston walked quietly to the small window of the lighted cabin. Inside, he saw Bob talking to an old man alone. 
Well, there's only one of them in there, King. Guess you better stay out here. On guard, boy. Stay here and watch, King. Yes, sir. Uh, who are you? I'm Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police. I'm a friend of your nephew, Tim. Well, come in, come in. Tim, here's a friend of yours. Tim just got here the day before yesterday, oh, Sergeant. I, uh... All right, Bob, don't say a thing. You're under arrest. It's ain't Bruce Divers. What's this? This isn't your nephew at all, Mr. O'Hara. Oh, he's lying. Sure, and you must be mistaken, Sergeant. He's been telling me all about Ireland and Galway Your and nephew all... and your niece are with me, Mr. O'Hara. This man's an imposter. Where's the man who came with him? His friend Joe, you mean? Yes. Uh, he went out this afternoon to do some hunting. We needed fresh meat, uh, and he ain't back yet. Get over in that corner, Bob. I'm handcuffing him. When Sergeant Preston entered the cabin, King lay in the darkness outside. Suddenly, he noticed a figure steal silently from the trees nearby. The big dog raised his head, his ears pricked forward. A man came silently to the side of the cabin and peered in the window. Quietly, King crept toward him. Suddenly, the great dog saw the man raise a rifle. With a roar, King launched himself straight at him, and they rolled in the snow. <laughs> You got him. Get up, Joe. I have your gun. So you tried to shoot me through the window, eh? No. This dog jumped me for no reason. Get into that cabin. You're under arrest. Who's the other one, Mr. O'Hara? Must have seen me going into your cabin. But he didn't know King was watching outside. I can't believe this. Get over beside Bob, Joe. I'm handcuffing you together. I don't see how you got here. Oh, there's your real nephew now, Mr. O'Hara. That's my dog team. Tim! Tim, is it you? <laughs> it's me, all right, Uncle Michael. And here's Mary. Well, Glory be. And he looks just like Father. Well, it saints be praised. I never expected a last like this. Uh-huh. Come in, come in. Oh, but wait, Uncle Michael. Wait. There's something else you'll be happy to see. Come here, Tara. Here, boy. Come here. Tara. An Irish wolfhound. Glory be to heaven, I never expect to lay any eyes on one again. And you wouldn't have, or on us either, if it hadn't been for Sergeant Preston and King. Uh, this is almost too much for an old man like me. So much happening all at once. We'll tell you all about it, Mr. O'Hara, from beginning to end. Yes, thanks to these two dogs, this case is closed. <laughs> Challenge of the Yukon, a copyrighted feature, is brought to you each week at this time, and all names and incidents used are fictitious. Listen again next week to another exciting adventure during the days of the gold rush. Fred Foy speaking. This program came to you from Detroit. When a radio program combines entertainment with a message, that's good. And when that program is David Harding Counterspy, that's excellent. Counterspy has tackled every vital problem confronting America in the past few years, done it by building an exciting 30-minute program based on some current issue. During the war, Counterspy won acclaim by its astonishingly true-to-life dramas. Counterspy now turns its attention to people who are trying to hamper world peace. As David Harding pointed out in a recent broadcast, during the war, most Americans learned that to blame or hate another person because of his religion is dangerous. Prejudice can weaken our nation, hurt us personally. We can resolve never to spread prejudice any more than we would spread a wartime rumor. Don't miss tomorrow afternoon's timely, thrilling David Harding counter-spy story, heard over many of these same ABC stations. This is ABC, the American...